Hello Cherries fans, it's the beginning of another week and it means it's chance to take a second look at the weekend's football. Welcome to Back of the Net, my name's Sam Davis. My name's Tom Jordan. We're an AFC Bournemouth fan channel and podcast so you can do a couple of things whilst you're here. If you watch on YouTube that is. Yeah, click that like button first of all, it's just there, easy to do. So we'd appreciate that. And then they might as well subscribe as well, mate. Get us, we, we've been going up in subscribers lately, which is uh, really nice. Don't think it's anything to do with our form. Might be to do with last-minute goals at the Emirates. <laughs> but um, no, we appreciate all the subscribers to do that. And if you click the bell, you'll know when, we're, when we have a video dropped. Well, Villa Park wasn't quite our playground after all. We cheekily titled our preview show on YouTube that, but it was a game of swings and roundabouts, Tom. See yeah, what did there? Yeah, very good. It was a 3-0 loss, silly goals to concede, not being ruthless... Just a general malaise all round. But despite the defeat, we're actually in no worse position in the league, which is still lagging. Just a point behind the nearest team in the safety zone. And if anything, maybe it's time to get these lessons out of the way when there's still time to survive. But mm. a couple of phrases came to the fore during the fan cams. One swallow doesn't make a summer. Even a broken clock reads twice a day. We're going to go through it. And also with your help on Twitter, we've asked you a few questions. So we're going to go through those. But Tom, I've got to just say, it was... Just talking about the match in mm. general, it was a performance which I, I, I didn't really understand because I thought that the Liverpool game showed so much signs of promise, but all those signs of promise just were absent against Villa. Yeah, I agree. It's probably a good way of putting it, actually. It was kind of one of them head-scratching mm. kind of performances. Um, said about it enough, kind of said it in the preview and on fan cams, that I was a... Especially when I got I got to the pub and that before the game and everyone's in good spirits, which is great, and everyone's confident. I was a little bit... Kind of, I just knew how different this game had the potential to be, and you know we've gone over it enough that when you're playing teams that are gonna you know leave space in behind, it's a little bit easier to soak it up and counter attack. And I was just wary that could we do stuff that we're gonna have to do differently than we did against Liverpool? Could, have, have we, did we have that in our locker, um, you know, to maybe change certain bits without changing too much because we performed well against Liverpool, mm. um, and it just didn't quite materialise. Um, and I think the worrying thing for me was, kind of put it on Twitter, that spoke to a few Villa fans and they all were kind of like, we didn't really feel like we had to do much to win easy. Mm. And that's a concern, especially when you see only a week week before that, that West Ham don't play particularly well, but find a way yeah. of getting something. And that's my, my worry is these sort of games, when we're not on it, we lose. Mm. And there's teams like West Ham that I just mentioned that are in there with us and seem to not play well and go, can nick a point. And I feel like we have to be absolutely brilliant to get anything um, which we haven't done a lot lately but it was a shame because especially with the international break coming up and the spirit after the Liverpool game if, if we could just positive performance nick a point go into that break you know in a really good place regardless of league position but it just didn't happen unfortunately and experienced managers in the Premier League do manage to find a way because they've had so many different games to actually play and lots of different teams to play against in different styles and it's not just you know, the Liverpools that we'll be facing, we will be facing those low block sides and we need to find a way. And it's, have we got the man to find that way? But like, I think it's, we will talk about Gary O'Neill, of course, but I think that that conversation has probably been and gone with regards to, you know, should we have him, should we not? Because let's face it, there are going to be no changes that are made now. Some clubs feel it's right to, hmm. to make a change, but not AFC Bournemouth. And we've got to start on some positives though. Yeah. Adam Smith, our leading Premier League appearance holder now with, what is it, 139? What a stalwart he's been for us. And yeah. in the Premier League, of course. Yeah, he's been brilliant. And um, I do I do think often he's he's tended to go into that scapegoat category of recent times, which is a shame. I think we've had it with a few of them. Steve Cook, Andrew Sermon, it seems to go that way. Um, but yeah, r- ridiculously consistent in my opinion. Um, don't always grab the headlines because he's a fullback that, yeah. you know, just does his job. But I do think really, really consistent um, for us in the Premier League and in the Championship. And we've said it before, in all the different managers he's played under, they all play him. Mm. Um, so he obviously gives you something. He's, he's now, it's weird because I remember him when he come on loan, like when he was a, a kid. I always remember that as that goal um, at Peterborough away. Oh, yeah, sky, he just squirmed stuffed, underneath the keeper. And he looks like a kid, doesn't he? Yeah. And we obviously had him on loan, he went and then come back. Um, and now he's kind of that experienced head, if you like. And yeah, I, I love Smithfield. It's a real, it's a real shame that when something like that, you know, a record like that, and we didn't perform very well, yeah. and he was at the back, we could see the three goals. I think he was only on the pitch for one, to be fair to him. But yeah, it was a bit, bit of a shame for him. But regardless, because clearly he's not going to be at the levels than when he was in his prime. But regardless, still think he's an important member of the squad. And I do think 
regardless of the league we're in, I think he'll have another year with us, actually. Um, he's pretend- wily, he's intelligent, yeah. he, he knows when to go over at the right time, he can win a free kick. Honestly, I think he's probably rivaling Jack Grealish for winning free kicks at times. Yeah, I know what you mean. And and I think also, I don't uh, the way he's adapted his game, I think, goes under the radar a little bit, in the sense that he was like more of a wing-back than a full-back, yeah. with bomb on all the time, and now you're going, or he can tuck into a free if you need him to. And, that, you know, he's had to adapt his game for that, Um and, you know, there were, there were times where, you know, he's fine out with Fran, who was a brilliant right back for us. So, yeah, I love Smithy. It's, yeah, he's cut, probably coming to an end now. Like I say, I reckon he'll probably get another year. Hopefully, if we stay up, he'll be more of a um, kind of squad player, potentially. But, yeah, love Smithy. Love, and that's, you know, that's no mean feat. Is it 139 appearance mm. in the Premier League for Bournemouth? Is, yeah, really, really good. And, uh, yeah, there was another positive as well, wasn't there? There yeah, was, yeah, the return of David Brooks after his uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma diagnosis to come back after however many days it was I think it was approaching 530 days not in a Bournemouth shirt but it was so good to see him come on albeit in a substitute appearance I thought he might be brought on in a game when we might be say 2-0 up or 3-0 up or comfortably winning Mm. where there wasn't that risk but he was brought on I think maybe it was it was done for maybe not just tactical reasons we can talk about that a bit later on of course but you know the overwhelming vibe from Bournemouth fans and I've I've also got to pay credit to Villa fans here as well because yeah. they they realised the situation and they they all applauded him from all sides of the stand as well. It was just a really nice moment for him, for him, wasn't it? Yeah, and I think uh, yeah, I agree with it in terms of the Villa fans because I think sometimes when things like this happen, you, it feels so close to your football club that you forget that oh, this is a you know a big yeah. you know story, and all the Villa. Villa fans were well aware, you know, it was it was evident they stood up straight away. Um, and I think he said after the game, even when he warmed up, the Villa fans were clapping. Oh, him. that's so nice. Yeah. Um, which really was really nice. nice. Yeah, it was a shame, as you say. It was horrible because he came on and I think they scored like a minute later. They did, yeah. And it was the game was done, but because there was a, that little glimmer of because it was one nil at the time going, this could be fairy tale mm. stuff. You know, he comes on and, and nicks a, a late equaliser or something. Didn't happen. He didn't really get the ball in the game much, did he at all? Um, it was one of them things. I think, yeah, I think ideally, obviously he was back on the bench last week um, in the Liverpool game. I was if we had nicked a second at the end, he might have just come on for a cameo. Yeah. And But actually, I, I had no problems with, with the change. We all know how good Brooks is and if he's available, he's available. Um, and I also felt like at that time we needed just a bit of a lift. And mm. that, you know, just for a... For that moment, it lifted, you know, it gets it did, the fans yeah, yeah. going a little bit. I kind of understood it. And it was for Smithy at the time. And we had to kind of throw caution to the wind a little bit and get on something who, to be fair, if he stays, you know, fit and healthy, um, could be a really, we will probably go into it a little bit more. But in terms of a player that can unlock a door mm. and it's not just all about counter-attacking with pace, and you, that's the sort of player he is. And you did make a call last week, didn't you? You did say that you believe that there's going to be one moment mm. for David Brooks. Yeah, Brooks will stand. That could be season Yeah, five. Yeah, you, I just feel like he'll have a moment. That'd be great. And yeah, it would be, would be amazing. But first and foremost, the most important thing is <clears> to see him back doing what he loves is, is, is amazing. So really pleased to... Because I, I think now, because he's managed to get that fitness and get in the squad before at the end of the season, mm. I think really... I mean, obviously he's going to hope to play a part this season, but really that means he should be in good stead for next campaign, yeah. whatever league, and that's massive for us and for him. A few things that Villa fans took offence to in our preview and also just over the weekend. Mm. Uh, we were calling this game winnable. Oh, I think it's... You know, when you're facing any team that isn't the top six, it's a, it's a game that we can win. And uh, we proved that uh, on the very first game of the season, albeit you were in dire straits. But um, we got we got a good result. And yeah, we've only, we've only managed to get points against one of the top six teams so far. That was Liverpool. But apart from that, all of our points have come from teams that are in the... Um, the well, the other 13. So... We looked at this game, also combined with our history at Villa Park mm. and playing them even in the Premier League, I think four wins on the spin. Um, we've always done well against them and I sort of felt the way they play might perhaps give us a chance. Mm. Uh, but it turns out that they're actually probably a lot more disciplined and resistant than Liverpool are defensively. Mm. A lot more organised. And tell you what, Unai Emery, mate, I've seen Top his man. record since he's taken over or something. If it was, if the season started from then, they would be third or something. Yeah, yeah, Ridiculous. it's gone on the radar a little bit, hasn't it? He's done so well. Yeah, I think you probably forget. I certainly did how bad they were before he come in mm. because I kind of felt like they are. Oh, they'll always stay up. Yeah. But really, they were they were below us mm. uh, when Emery come in, and now God knows how many points they are ahead of us. Nearly twenty, aren't they? Um, yeah, he's done a remarkable job. He's a, he's a top coach. And I think credit to Villa and to him in the sense that they could be on the beach, really, um, because they're not really playing for anything this season. But I think they want to show them signs to take on into next season of, of trying to get at least top 10, I would have thought. And yeah, fair play to them because they, 
they were in control of that football match. Yeah. Um, they they really were. There there was a few moments for us, but yeah, they were in full control and they've got some good players there. And he hasn't really managed to put his stamp on the team yet in terms of having another you know right. having that summer window. So yeah, I think they should be be thinking positively. Villa Your top um, ten finish for him. I would definitely be predicting for them top ten. Sadly, I mean, I forget they're actually close to doing that this season, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't. Uh, yeah, they've closed that gap on Chelsea. So yeah, yeah, they're they're a good side. They have got the right coach and they're going in the right direction. And reluctantly, I'd like to say that I thought Tyrone Mings was flawless. Yeah, and yeah, we'll, look, we'll talk about him later yeah. on because I, 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 there are so many Before different conversations super. that will emanate from this match. I think it's uh, it's one that could be pivotal in terms of us um, realising a few things, because there are a few things we've realised after this, and we may echo some of them and your thoughts as well. There is the league table that unfortunately shows that Bournemouth uh, are in 19th, but we're sort of no worse a position, really. We're, we're sort of still in touch. Villa, look at them, doing so well. Last four, unbeaten. 11th in the league. Southampton... Mind they, uh, the gap. Yeah, mind, mind the gap. I mean, you know what? It's um, it's all going to be a bit squeaky bum time. It I'm is. absolutely certain as the season. It's progresses. interesting to just to have a little glimmer at there that bottom of the league. Obviously, Southampton played 28. Mm. Then we played 27. So you go all oh, game in hand. But then West Ham played 26. Mm. So it's them games and hands are going to be quite mm. crucial as well. Actually, uh, going to be interesting because there's like now a little gap where a few teams have played one more, one less. Yeah. Um, but. We're still in the position with enough games to go that you virtually play each other. All it, year, so. Yeah, look, it's still so congested. Three points between 12 and 19. Let's take a look at the baseline tracker table. Saints at bottom of that two or minus seven. And of course, we didn't we didn't lose out because it was an away fixture. Had we played Aston Villa at home and they got the result against us, we would have been three points down. But we are on minus three. There you can see Forest, West Ham and Saints there. Forest conceding late against Eddie Howe's Newcastle, of course. If you want to see more from the baseline tracker table and a lot of other stats, it's the other 14 on Twitter. Do give them a follow. Absolutely superb. And um, yeah, we paid credit to Villa. We paid credit to Unai Emery. Probably paid credit to their board as well for making a a decision at the right time. And this isn't to necessarily criticise the hierarchy at AFC Bournemouth, but... I think Villa are a huge club and yeah. obviously there was such a lot of negative sentiment and their football was trash as well at times, mm, wasn't mm. it? So I think uh, you Villa fans will have been delighted that they pulled the trigger at that point in time and yeah. what an appointment to get. Yeah, it's a massive appointment. I kind of understood at the time when they got Gerrard, I thought that makes sense, a bit of a project. I think they gave him enough time in my opinion it didn't quite work. Um, but to attract someone like Unai Emery, he's, he's, he's an elite coach in my opinion. So World class? Uh, yeah, he's got to be on the border of that but... It shows what, what Villa want to be because, as you said, Villa are a big club mm. and they haven't been competing for that kind of them European places enough. Uh, let's, let's be honest, they're a, they, they should be competing with them sort yeah. of teams. Um, yeah, they're not you know that, that kind of top four, but they should be competing in that little mini league below it, especially when you look at Brighton are doing that and Fulham mm. are doing that. So that's what they'll, they'll be trying to do next year. But the, yeah, the appointment was a shrewd one. I think everyone virtually thought that's a good appointment at the time and it's, it's proven to be the case. And yeah, I think uh, we said about it in the preview. I think the when they brought the caretaker manager in, when they let Gerard go, he won like four 0 But they knew what they wanted to do. They didn't go, oh, hang on, can we give it a few months? No, they went. Oh, I want, we want Emery. Let's go and get him. And um, yeah, they're reaping the rewards now, mate. And as as I say, I still think with his pull, they'll get in some good players, and they've already got some decent ones. But I think if you sprinkle a little bit more quality into that side. Um, they've got the right coach to go forward, definitely. So, yeah, so Villa fans had a good afternoon, and I'm sure a good evening as well. Had to do that. Um, right, let's take a look at the team lineups then at two o'clock. We're having some some Thai tappers in the Barton's arms, mate. I don't, did you did you sample any? No, no, no. You're not into that. Um, They're chicken wings and chips, mate. Yeah, no, no, I. I, I debated it but yeah. then I thought you know what I'll, I'll have some some grubby rubbish in the, yeah, in the stadium yeah. instead um, I want to hunger at the time but yeah said it was right didn't you yeah I yeah. Yeah, really enjoyed it I had a Massaman curry you can see the vlog oh it was so tasty a, a very different type of food to consume on a match day but mm. really really enjoyed it and look it didn't do a lot of footage uh, pre two o'clock but then at two o'clock, didn't even need to do any footage of that because you got it right, mate, from the preview. 22 out of 22. Bang on, mate. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you very much. Yeah, I was uh, happy with that. I think, as I said uh, in the vlog, I felt like ours was quite self-explanatory because we just beat Liverpool. It would have yeah. been weird to change anything, really. And um, they, they were they were doing all right. And they had a few injuries to key players in terms of Kamara's been out for a bit and Coutinho. Mm. So I felt like they both... Uh, yeah, kind of pit themselves. I think really my only thing was their left back just because of um, 
us on the break. I think yeah, we, yeah. we talked about that and Moreno likes to bomb on, but um, he managed to, to perform all right and he's got the shirt over Digne at the moment and he kept it. So, yeah, I was pleased to get that bang on. Anyway, that was something from the day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We'll talk about the average positions later on because Moreno, well, he certainly did yeah, he bomb, bomb on. Uh, Zamora still frozen out despite looking happy in his yeah. training photos that afcb.co.uk mm. put out in the week. Um, he seems like, I don't know, he's, he seems like a good guy to have around the place, I think, because he seems to inject a lot of positivity and it's all smiles. He's got a connection with Jaden Anthony and I know that there are these contractual negotiations that are going on, but can, like, can't we just put him on the bench? Do we really have to teach him a lesson by not including him at all? Yeah, I know what you mean. It's it's a weird one. I I guess from O'Neill's perspective, if if the decision's up to him and they've kind of said, you know, he's available for selection if you if you want to pick him, I wonder if he's for because I think we'd all agree Kelly deserves to stay in there after the Liverpool mm, performance, yeah. and because Vina's available, I think he probably thinks, well, I don't need two left backs on the bench, yeah. so actually I'll I'll make a bit of a point while I can. I think if Vina or Kelly got injured, I think he would forget that point. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. it's one of them. We all like Jay Z, but I I did feel like there wasn't probably a massive need um, for him in this game after how well Lloyd did against Liverpool so it'll he's be not, interesting coming up though he's not been poor though by any stretch Jordan so no. and we saw this a few times under Scott Parker where players would inexpli- inexplicably just be dropped yeah all of a sudden yeah it's it is a difficult one because I, I, I mean his last game was the Arsenal game wasn't it and we actually kind of threw it away after he went off the pitch and he actually was playing against the on-form right winger mm. in the Europe in Saka and, and kept him relatively quiet. So yeah, I, I yeah I think he's been, he's had a decent season to be mm. fair to him. But yeah, it probably just coincided with the fact that Lloyd then become available. So mm. it was kind of, well actually we, we can afford to teach him a lesson yeah, or whatever yeah. you want to call it. But I do hope whatever it is is sorted to a certain degree just to get him back and available. Mm. But you know, you look at that, this is what I've, I'm sure we'll get onto it, mate, but the squad that people say aren't good enough. I mean, Zamora didn't get on the bench. Ryan Fredericks can't get on the bench yeah. when they're fit and apparently available. So shows our depth, in my opinion. It's a, and it's also possibly out of his control as well. Maybe, because, yeah. Know, the agents are the ones that usually negotiate. I know the players have got certain wishes and demands and stuff, but yeah. maybe it is out of his hands. So, Jordan, I just hope, hope you can get it sorted. Right then, game starts. From the off, I felt that we were just really leggy, mate. Mm. Just really leggy. And just, I said it on the vlog, like almost like we've been drinking the night before. We just <laughs> seemed to be second to everything. And Villa were having a lot of the ball. We weren't having much of it. And uh, it wasn't long mm. before we were punished. Only about seven minutes in. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I felt that it was weird. It felt like we were just strolling around the place. And they were as well, but they had the ball when they were doing mm. it. It felt like a really, it almost felt like a friendly at the start. Mm. Really weird. But um I knew they'd have the ball because every team has more of the ball than us. Yeah. Um, but I expected the kind of intensity in the, the press to be a lot more urgent than it was. We, we sat off them a lot and the goal was really poor. Oh, well, really, really poor. I posted a, a picture on Twitter, which I'm going to put on screen now for you, that actually shows how, how bad it was really. I mean, it was awful defending. But, well, I suppose we should just maybe tackle this first. It was a four at the back according to the team lineups, but it seemed like a three for a lot of the game. Can work out what was going on because Adam we? Smith was so far forward at he's, times, he was as was Jamie. Yeah, it was, I yeah, didn't get it was it. really bizarre. I mean, Lloyd was certainly tucked in, um, and Jack Stevens, who one of his poorest games in a Bournemouth shirt, but I felt like that was because he was almost told to be right of a free and was getting pulled out all over the place, and he wasn't natural there. But there was no way him and Celesi were just the two at times. No, uh, Celesi was right in the middle, and Kelly and, and Stevens were either side, but it was, it was just so weird. like it was like Smith for the first time I've ever seen was playing as an inverted wing back and he was trying to bring him into midfield. Yeah, that's what I found. Well, that's the, that's what I found weird because the ball started on on their left hand side and Adam Smith was quite advanced. But then when Villa got possession, they recycled it and they you know transitioned up the pitch you know pretty fast. And then there was Jack Stevens, Marcus Sinesi, Lloyd Kelly. But then for some reason Adam Smith decided to go between Sinesi and Jack Stevens, which. I suppose Jack Stevens was like had his marker to keep his eyes on, so he mm. he sort of slotted in. But you know, by the time the ball reached, who is it? Bailey on the right hand side, yeah. who who crossed it in. You can see there this this absolute crevasse of space that's created. I mean, you could you could put like a ring around him, and there'd be no one near him for for quite a way. I mean, that's that's awful. that's. That's bad. And look, if it wasn't going to be Louise, it would be the next one. If it wasn't yeah. going to be him, it would be the next one after that. Yeah, worrying. Um, but yeah, the, the Smithy thing, I felt like it has to be an instruction the way he was coming inside because I've never seen him do it before. Mm. So that that's a real head scratcher. Um, in terms of, I actually felt, I'm sure we'll come on to it, I felt Rothwell played quite well in the game, but I yeah. think he goes 
goes to sleep a little bit. Right. Haven't watched it back. Um, when it's all getting transitioned, he kind of doesn't track anyone back. Mm. Lloyd's probably maybe a little bit harsh, but he's got to stop that. He's got to stop the cross. That, that, mm. That's literally, he knows in that moment, that's my job. And he, it's a bit frustrating. Does it go under his legs? Mm. And it's, yeah, it's a, I don't, I don't not putting loads, all the blame on, on Lloyd, but he's probably frustrated that he didn't just block the cross and it go out for a yeah. corner. Um, but yeah, in the middle of the pitch, I don't know, um, in the middle of the box, sorry, I don't know what anyone's doing. It was so easy for for Louise, who doesn't get many goals, but he's scored a couple against us now. Yeah. Um, but he popped up at the right time and it's kind of the goal that we've been scoring lately of kind of popping up from midfield and, and just tapping it in. But yeah, one of a good start, mate. Just, I just wonder this 3-4, three, th- this 3 or a 4, it, it seems to be when we're in possession, we're doing one thing, when we're out, yeah. we're doing another. And I just think sometimes, I said on Twitter, on my own personal Twitter, sometimes it, I feel as though it's maybe like mentally overburdening the players with like thinking of the things they have to do. And as a result, they're thinking of that rather than just the basics at times and yeah, it seemed right. like the fundamental um, sort of things that you need in football just had gone like passes to feet passes to move it just you know, like weren't doing it and I don't know it seems defensively we're still such a worry we're still and we're, we're like conceding three goals like that it could have been a hell of a lot more in that game it really could have yeah it could have and I think that's more my worry going forward really because I'm sure we'll go into like the fixtures and stuff but Against, I don't get me wrong. It's it's very difficult against them teams, Arsenal, City, and Liverpool that we had back to back. But from an instruction point of view, because you know you're playing a team that are far superior, you've got to be low block, deep, resolute, high intensity, so have loads of energy, mm. and just counter when you can. And it's kind of a very um, simple instruction to get your head round, even though it's going to be difficult because you're playing against quality players. And I feel like in these sort of games, as as you kind of alluded to, mate, we're, we're overcomplicating things, and then. Mm. I felt like all game, no one really knew what they were doing or should no. be doing, and it was it was very very strange. Um, yeah, and that is, as I say, that's my concern going forward because we're going to play these sort of teams and we can't just sit back and counter. Um, and their front three is very good, very fast, very powerful. Yeah, and it's um, and in, interchanges quite well. They're quite intelligent footballers. I think Buendia in particular. Very, very clever footballer, um, and yeah, we're always they're always going to pick up uh, good positions, and we're going to struggle with them. And Ramsey running from deep as well. It was yeah, it was we we couldn't cope with them all game. I felt like they had control in all areas really. The, the midfield, I felt they had control. The defense had a really bad game, and obviously mm. we'll go on to the kind of lack of clinicality up the top end of the pitch. It's so weird. So uh, during the during the first half, I, I sort of used the word earlier in the pod the malaise and the, the like the lack of tempo, but it's so weird. Even at full time, I felt like that. I didn't. I didn't think we were great. But then the stats actually paint a bit of a different picture, and it's like, hang on, really? Like we had more shots than I thought we did. Mm. Um, we did have a, a few clear cut moments, and I, you know, I expect you know those would be more pronounced had we had we taken them because we'd realise that they were linchpin moments in the game. But as it was, I mean, like Solanke, for instance, he had a chance where he cut in on his right in that first half and went straight down the keeper's throat. So they managed to save. But, you know, for all the chances that we had, they had ones that were maybe slightly better. It was when when Watkins was put through and I think he he maybe tried a dink, maybe should have just slide rolled it across the floor. But Neto did really well to uh, to stand up to him then. But, you know, by half time, it, you know, it, it could have easily been like three one or something. Yeah, it could have. And I think that one for some reason I watched match of the day and um that one one on there, that Watkins chance. Oh really? Um against Neto in the first half. I mean there was loads in the second, but yeah. Because I think that one went under the radar a little bit. I was like, mm. really big save. It was, in terms, huge, it was a huge save. And it was the fact that a lot of keepers would go down there. And I thought yeah. we'd done really well to, to stay big um, and read the situation really well. And obviously, obviously, it turned out it didn't kind of matter to the game. But at that point, you're going in one nil instead of two. That's, mm. that's massive um, for us. That was, that was a big save in the game from now. But yeah, I know what you mean. I think I felt like we had a lot of kind of block shots and shots that they... Like, like you said, one went down the throat and yeah. it was not really... Um, yeah, it didn't feel like any sort of substance. And I was weirdly quite happy to come in at 1-0 mm. and think, we're in this game because I felt like, right, we can, we know we can perform better than this. Yeah, if yeah. they take their after the ball a little bit, we nick a goal, who knows? Um, obviously, it didn't work, work out that way. But yeah, I was... Even stats-wise and stuff, it maybe looked a little bit more even than it was. I felt they were quite comfortable. Yeah, I felt they were. I mean, let's have a look at the um, the shots timeline now. Of course, this is mm. this is for the whole game, but it actually makes it look so. But I mean, look, we had ten shots to their to their twenty. Not many of them, I think, really tested the keeper. Of course, one of the ones in the in the second half was when we won a free kick. I think Wataru was fouled, and then Phil. But I mean, that was an excellent free kick. Yeah, absolutely leathered it, but it was 
probably the only place that he could have put out and Martinez read it really well. Yeah, it was the... Great save though, looks good. Yeah, it does. It was the, it was one of them. It was like, it's the only place he can put it. It's the only thing he can really do unless you try something clever and yeah, do like yeah, a yeah. one-two or something. So he done it bang on, but then Martinez probably knows, well, that's the only thing you can do. Yeah, yeah. So I should save it. Yeah. So it was kind of worked out how, how you predicted. But yeah, it was, a, it was a decent stride, mate. And Martinez still had to be there to save it. But um, that's what we, because the game was stayed at 1 0, that's what I mean. You only need a moment like that. Mm. Um, so yeah, on another day, that could fly in. But um, yeah, at that point, I thought, oh, it's still 1 0. Mm. Could we just open something up? But I just still, I never felt in the game that it looked that way. I always felt like. They could up it if they needed to. One hundred percent. And it, they were just coasting really, yeah. and there wasn't. We weren't doing enough, and it felt like they're just as likely to go and kill this game off, which obviously evidently happened. Yeah, that's right. We had a couple of bookings. We had Philip Billing early doors, as we know, but then uh, in the second half, Jefferson Lerma was then booked for a cynical foul, and at that point, Gary O'Neill decided to make a couple of changes. So we can see the match timeline here. These are all the changes and all the key action points that happened during the game. If you're listening on the audio pod, unlucky, watch on YouTube. However, on 59 <laughs> minutes, the changes were Semenyo for Jaden Anthony, who I thought was quite under par. The strange one I thought was Triore for Rothwell. Rothwell I thought was doing really well during that game. Strange. I did think that was strange. Not strange to bring Triore on. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I thought he was poor when he came on, but we know he's a... But I'm going to say something about Troy. The stats show show differently about Troy, well, which he, I just don't get. Well, he did play Weird some game. passes that meant is probably creating stats Assists, were good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but he, he did lose the ball as well quite a few times. But I got him coming on. I kind of wanted him to come on. I couldn't get my head around taking Rothwell. I thought he was the only one trying to make something happen. He was the only one in midfield trying to drive. During the fan cams, you said it. Someone else said it before you. I think uh, Tom, the other Tom said it as well. Billy Day said it. Everyone said Rothwell. Yeah, yeah. really, really odd. It was really odd. And um, particularly, and then you go, oh, okay, is there something like, is he on a yellow? No, but the other two midfielders yeah. were. I couldn't get, couldn't get my head around it. I think, I mean, I probably would have looked at it and gone... You know, let's throw caution to the wind a little bit, have a bit of a go and take Lerma off, to be honest. Mm. But I would have understood if it was Billing, yeah. um, potentially. But I, I also appreciate the point that Billing could pop up with a goal. So, you know, you could look at that. But yeah, I thought Rothwell was the only one trying to make something happen. So it was a, a little bit strange that he was he was the man replaced. We don't know if he was, you know, he has had his injuries. Maybe he wasn't quite fully fit to finish the night. Or mm. he thought he'd run out of legs a little bit. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, I was a little bit frustrated that Rothwell come off because I thought he was the one that, that looked like he just had a bit about him. Um, I do. I am liking the little things I'm seeing from Rothwell now. Mm. In terms of when he gets the ball, it feels like his first thought is to go forward, to yeah, drive, exactly. to be positive. Um, which, yeah, but it was, he was quite clearly the only player that I felt was doing that. So, yeah, bit of an odd one, but um, I understood bringing on Traore anyway. And although he looked a bit unfit or just not not yeah. really on it. I mean, he's just come back from an injury, but I just. I... I think sometimes when you he come on and his first couple of touches weren't very good and I think mm. that almost shaped the rest of his game, yeah. unfortunately. We know he's a good player, but yeah, maybe that he's just been out. Um, and I got Semenyo for Anthony because Anthony wasn't having his best of games and Semenyo offers you a good bit of pace and mm. you know maybe something different to, to drive at him, but yeah, I want to be. Dom, we said we had, he had that chance earlier on in the game and oh my God, he had a chance in the second half, Ooh. didn't he, when he was put through and that was a golden chance. I don't... He hasn't scored in what eight or nine now. I think. I think his confidence levels went on goal. Seemed shot to pieces in in many ways. Whereas mm. uh, you know all his other play, you can't fault him for his for his no. work rate for his effort. However, that chance. I mean, a championship Dom Solanke. I've seen this uh, a number of times on Twitter. A championship Dom Solanke would have scored that. It's just. I, I don't know. He made the angle worse for himself by coming back onto his yeah. left. Not sure why he did that when he could have just opened him up on his right. But yeah. I don't know. There's there's something with him at the moment that's just not not quite confident enough to take that. Chance. No, I think I think every striker would tell you that his confidence is just so big. And as soon as he was played through, there was oh, I don't want to be too negative. There was no thought in my mind that he'd score. No, scored. no, no, I didn't. Know. Because when you're a player that's low on confidence, you almost need like a ball to come in. You've got no time to think about it. You just poke it. It goes in. Hmm. If you've got no confidence and you've got, he had too much time to think yeah. about it. And that's, um, and that's one thing with Dom. Like, um, I thought he'd got over those yeah. kind of demons. Like, do you remember that goal against Birmingham City last year in the champ where he was put through oh, yeah, and he ran goal. through mm. and it was uh, effectively turned on to, into a one-on-one -on, -one on the keeper. Like, from an angle, very similar, mm. but on his right foot. And he took that really well. And, you know, when he scores 30 goals in the championship and then he hits the ground running the Premier League, that great goal against Forrest that yeah. uh, helped with our comeback win... You're thinking, hello, maybe mm. he's able to cut it. But a few things I'm seeing when he's on goal recently just concerns me. Yeah, for sure. He's clearly a, a really good footballer and we function better with him in the team. We saw that when we he do. was out. We do. Um, 
But unfortunately, we all know that he's he's not going to bag a hat, a hat full in the Premier League. Um, unfortunately, he's going he's to um, help out of a few here and there. Of course, he is, and he is a striker, and he's going to get judged on that. But I do feel the level of responsibility on him is is too yeah. much. I think he he probably feels that a little bit. I mean, there have been a few people that have said um, he should be dropped or rested for a game. No way. If if he dropped on Solanke, we don't function. Yeah, as, as well. Absolutely. No, no I, way. I, I, I we can, need him. I could understand a, a point of maybe putting someone up alongside him. We probably haven't got amazing options. Kiefer Moore is such a different striker and it would change the way we play. Could you try a Solanke just off a Semenyo potentially? Who knows? Um, and there was a spell this season where him and Kiefer were doing quite well together against Villa at, at home, for example, right at the start. But um, yeah, it's I, he's asked to drop off, link up the play, run the channels... Um, Press hard. He's asked to do so much, and then he's got to be our goal scorer. He's a number nine and a number ten. Yeah, no, he is absolutely. Um, and I've, I, yeah, I, I do feel he'd be better with someone up alongside him. But equally, should he have squared it? I mean, take a look at this picture, mate. Should yeah, there it looks like it. it. I, I want, I want my centre forward to to score that. I don't. I know what you mean, and he probably could square that, and it might work out. But I want him to take that on and put that in the corner. I, what, he's not left footed. I no. could not understand why he almost took it onto his left no. foot. No, I mean, yeah. Mm- I remember what, I mean, I'm not comparing him with Michael Owen, but when Michael Owen used to be in those situations, do you remember that goal against Argentina? Yeah, he would cut across the defender, so he'd draw a foul maybe. I yeah. mean, Callum Wilson used to do this a lot. Why he comes onto his weaker foot and then narrows the angle as a result, I, I do not know. One thing that I noticed that like after the chance was missed, a lot of players would be moaning at Dom. Like, you know, Wattara didn't say anything. No. Um... Yeah, no, it's, it's a difficult one. I've, it reminded me a bit, do you remember the last game of last season, the Millwall 1-0 win? Mm. And Kiefer Moore scored that one-on-one. Yeah. Where he had, I think it was a quick throw and he was bearing down a goal for ages, a bit like this. Yeah. And Kiefer Moore had just won his promotion. Yeah. And his confidence through the roof, he's the saviour. And he just runs and just hammers it. He could have squared it to, I think it was Anthony at the time. Yes, that's right, yeah. And he just hammers it in the goal and the whole time he was running down, I knew he'd score. Yes, yeah. And if you're on confidence, Dom Solanke just runs through and smashes that in. Yeah. But if you're off it. And you know the pressure on it. You take an extra touch. You try and be overly precise and think, "Oh, oh I'll, I'll, I'll do." And it, that's just what it was. And yeah, it was um, not not good from Dom. At the end of the day, yeah, I love Solanke. I love what he brings. But you've got to say you're you're a centre forward. You've got to you've got to make the keeper work there mm. at minimum. And it was it was really poor, really poor finish from Dom. Um, and he needs something to just bounce off him. The fortunate thing is our next game he is against Fulham and he scored three goals his last three games against Fulham yeah, so. so he does like a goal against Fulham so hopefully that could be one that picks him up because we all know what he, what he brings to the team but if he's going to be that centre forward he has got to start being a little bit more ruthless in front of goal it's as simple as that yeah absolutely so uh, some changes were made later on uh, nice to see David Brooks uh, back and as, as we said uh, credit to the Villa fans for applauding him like all the Bournemouth fans were I just wonder if the de- that decision was maybe not tactical because he was put at left wing back by the looks of it. <laughs> yeah, he started as kind of a wing back. And was then it was... more to G up the fans, maybe, oh, just to create a good vibe, perhaps? I don't yeah. I can't. That's the only thing I can think of. He was kind of put in a, a wing back slash left midfield role, which he, I don't think I've ever really seen him play. Um, bit bit strange. I kind of thought just chuck him on and put him maybe in that kind of number 10 role and let him roam mm. and let him just, you know, try and make something happen. But... Listen, it quite quickly didn't matter because they scored very, very quickly after we come on. A off. minute. Was it that quick? Yeah, it felt felt quick. And um, yeah, it was a real shame for Brooksy because like you say, it could have been um, could have been a special special moment in coming on. I kind of, I understood the sub. We had good options on the bench, but I, I got why he brought on. I'm not really sure why he was put on the left-hand side. But no. there you go. Yeah, um, so Jacob Ramsey that uh, skipped past the ball defence and falls a chance. He sort of shaped his body like he was going to Neto's left in the end it, it, it actually went straight to Neto and straight under Neto and mm. ended up at the back of the net via a, a deflection off our keeper uh, could he have done better? Yeah I think um, listen Neto kept the score down Neto, Neto had a good game in general he definitely kept that score down he saved but he saved all of his saves were probably harder than that I didn't really that was a weird one You go, he will be looking at that going I should do better there mm. but first and foremost I think it's Stevens. He just walks past him, Ramsey. He just yeah. walks past him. It was embarrassing. It was so like easy. watching you on a Sunday night at Broadstone, just, mate. Just, just, oh, the oh, feet. Gliding past people, yeah. Um, it was good. good goal from, from Villa's perspective. They'll be looking at, you know, Ramsey, really good goal. But awful defending, mate. It was so easy for him. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, Neto would probably feel he could have done better. But then he makes some big saves after that. Mm. 
Yeah, uh, he did, and one of them was from Watkins from an angle. He mm. um, tipped over the right. Edge. Yeah, it was a, a really good. But um, a corner, a corner came in, <laughs> and uh, yeah, they uh, they did score a third, but it was out of play. But we all thought, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, do you remember that? So yeah. you know, I think on it the replay, clear, yeah. on the replay, it's it's clear how far the ball's out of play. But at the time, I was just like, oh god, this is going to go three 0 VAR. But um, yeah, it was put in, but. No, I mean, Ming has had a golden chance even before their third goal. Tyrone Ming, he would have loved to have scored against us, I'm absolutely yeah, certain. I'll would he celebrate? That. I think he would have. Oh, absolutely. Um, but I expected the net to ripple when it came to him because it just sat up really nicely for him. Took it with his left. Powerful. But again, yeah. good save from Neto. It was a good save. I think uh, Ming's uh, done a good tweet, actually, where he was kind of doing like, Listing things and put a tick, so it was like clean sheet, three oh, points, and then I was like having no composure in front of goal. So um, <laughs> nice. he's not known for his goals, is he? But yeah, it did. When you're behind it, you think, "Well, he's just going to put this in," and he probably just he probably should try and like he just puts it kind of straight down that his throat, but he still got to be there to save it. And I was relieved that no save that one. But then Mingzi did go and get an assist, didn't he? For the, mm. for the what? that is that third goal, by the way. When is my height. It just it was so we're, easy. We're one of the tallest teams in the league, aren't we? We're so bad at set pieces. Yeah, unbelievable. And this and this is the worry. This this really is the worry going forward. And uh, yeah, it was a it was a header from Buendia, and that made it three 0 And you have got to remember that that Liverpool game, obviously, lots of positives deserve to win. Blah blah blah. Van Dijk should score two headers. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's not just this game where sort of riding our luck at times. Yeah, this happened there, a lot from then, set pieces. You know that said, you know we need to be taking our chances as well. I think even on I think three 0 was a weird weird scoreline because it because it could have easily been like a one all. Yeah, it could have obviously, and O'Neill kind of alluded to that afterwards, and I can't get me around some of his interviews, but um, this kind of like a lot of people said, obviously that Dom chance massive. Yeah, but if Watkins takes his, then the game's done anyway. Yeah. Then that was before that. And then, I don't care what you say, Aston Villa have never had 20 shots this season. Have they Have they not? It's, them, it's their biggest they've had all season. Yeah. It's against us. Every team that, you know, have all these shots, it's always against us. We concede more shots than anyone in the league. So that's not fine margins because right, we, have, we create the least chances out of any team in the league. Mm. We have the least average shots per game than any team in the league. And we also concede the most... So that's not fine margins, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> We've had some big chances that game, but that is not fine margins. And we never have more possession than the opposition, ever. So what you're saying then is, so we give up a lot of chances. We're not very good at set pieces. We also let the other team have the ball and we don't create much ourselves. We have got to be so clinical. It's unreal to win a football match. And that, that's my worry, mate, because we've all said, oh, you know, we had a few chances and Villa weren't that good. They won 3-0 and they had 20 shots. Well, and like you said, I mean, I haven't even watched Match of the Day. I've seen some of the highlights packages, um, but I didn't even realise that they didn't include some of the key moments like yeah. Neto save. And you could be forgiven that if you didn't go to the game and you were looking at the stats and you look at the possession stats, you look at the shots, you look at all this kind of stuff, you think, actually, yeah, it's a bit unfair, a bit like flattered Villa, you know, 3-0, but... I'm, I'm not sure it did. We all we all left the stadium feeling aggrieved and annoyed and frustrated, as we all always do. Maybe not aggrieved because I think Villa did deserve it, of course. However, sometimes as a, as a fan, that's the that's the last thing you want to see, like a manager deflecting yeah. the actual problems here, and that's what seems to happen fairly frequently. It's just, I mean, he did did say in there we probably weren't at our levels at certain points, probably, and, and yeah, and he. And yes, we did have some some chances in the game. What annoys me is he always says, "Oh, if we're taking these shots, well, every game the teams will have a chance." Mm. And yes, we didn't take them, and I agree. And the timing of it, Dom Slaggy, it makes it waddle. I, I totally appreciate that. But I mean, I'd like—I know it's difficult, but I'd like the questions asked to him to be a little bit to try and get get a certain answers because it's mm. well. You keep saying they're fine margin, but why are every team that plays us having a ridiculous amount of chances then? Yeah. What, why do we never have the ball? Why, you know, if, if you're saying we could have taken some chances, so they could have scored 10 then. Yeah, yeah. Because right. if you want to say we could have taken ours, well, how many could they have taken? Yeah. Um, it, yeah, a little bit. And I don't know, it's just sometimes you need, when you're fighting like we are in terms of in the league table, you want, you want someone that you feel can really get them together and he comes out after the game like he's going to cry. Mm. You know, he, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. I nearly fall asleep. There's no there, yeah, nothing, there, is there? There's very much a despondency as soon as uh, he talks, and it just you know, as a fan, it doesn't motivate no. me. I just I just hope he's better in the change room. Obviously, Foley, Blake, and Hughes have have seen what he's like and um, have appointed him as a result of that. But at the moment, the results are certainly not conducive to a manager that is. Um, I don't want to say knows what he's doing because he's obviously mm. got a plan, but sometimes it just seems to be overthinking it, just just you know, like overcomplicating it for the mm. sake of it. Sometimes I think that's that was one of his letdowns. I just hope that it's simplified, it's simplified for the players so they can understand what they got to do yeah. and just because that's what it was like against Liverpool. You know, they like they did simplify it, like four at the back. It never really changed, mm. and it worked. And Villa are a good side, and for some reason we. We decided to revert back to the formation that often it doesn't work. Yeah, so weird. very strange. What are the other things that I, t- I don't want to <laughs> pile on at this point? No, I know. Why, why, why bring on Kiefer Moore after ninety-one <laughs> minutes? I mean, I is, is that to say? I mean, I know that he bought Vinho on as well. Watara and Phil Bill made way. Phil Bill was on a yellow. Maybe I mean, it was to protect him with with a minute to go. I, d- I don't understand. I, What's Kiefer Moore going to do? Uh, the game was done. Wasn't it? I guess just. Uh, get some fresh legs on, get him some minutes. I suppose it didn't really matter. Um, they were putting a lot of pressure on. Maybe he's thinking, oh, we don't want to go and see the four from a set piece. Kiefer might be able to get his head on it. I don't know. Um, it didn't really matter, I suppose, in the end. Um, what he did at that point, like I said, the game was game was well beyond us, mate. Um, yeah, completely done at that point. So didn't really, I didn't even really notice that they come on, to be honest. No, no, no. Um, at, that, like... at that point of the game. But um, yeah, but, but that's, they're the kind of options he has now. And um, I think a lot of people were, we're saying which you know when we when I was critical before maybe before the window um, kind of closed in January, a lot of people were, were saying well let's he probably we, probably deserves to see how he does when he's got these players in and you know all the, the squad's good and we're not having youth players on the bench. Yeah. Well, okay, I, I get that actually. That's a fair point. Um, well, kind of mentioned at the start, we've got good players that can't make the bench at the moment. Yeah. Really, really strong squad, and obviously it's a few weeks away. But our next game against Fulham, we've been. Handed a, a nice little treat that Mitrovic and William are, mm. are both out after their sendings off. So, what if we don't win that? Obviously, hopefully, we get something out of the game. But if we, if we lose that game, then what, Gary? Because you've got all your players, and you said it's about injuries. They missing two of their best players. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just kind of like okay, everything's coming together now. So let's see. Um, you know, because it's not it's in a game in isolation. It was poor, but let's see. We've got a big double header coming up at home where we've got you know touch wood. We don't get any international injuries. We should have a good squad going into them. Mm. Both two games at home, massive chance. Yeah, so more players coming back from injury, more players, more match fit, hopefully. Mm. Like I said earlier, it, the stats, like, I mean, I'll just put this on the screen just for reference, but Hamid Traore like, created three mm. chances. So he's quite high up in the other 14s, most chances created in week 28 table. But it, it just didn't It no. didn't feel like that. It's a, and Tom, you... Um, you wanted to reference the average positions as well because we always said that Moreno for Villa would would bomb forward and that's certainly what happened. His his average position was in our half. It was, it was, and um, that's that's what I'm getting at. We kind of, you know, we're not football managers. I we said it in the preview. It was so obvious that Moreno would do that. Sometimes I think you should be a manager. I agree. Um, he we, he always does that. He's always his average position is so high for what is. You know, on paper, a left fullback, mm. and this game we decided to make Smith more narrow. Mm. Haven't got a clue. It, do you know what I mean? It's just such a head scratcher because you think this is the one game where they're gonna have a lot of, you know, they're gonna have that left back bombing on and getting wide. And this was the game that we decided to make Smith come in a little bit more. And you can see from their average positions, mate, that looks like a free. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. It looks Absolutely. like a free. It, it, Smith virtually looks central midfield. It just looks oh. like a kind of. Um, it looks like you've, you know, if you've got like when you're at school and they have like a pencil case. Mm. I don't know why this comes to me, but you know, if you just tipped it all out, you don't know where it's going to end. That's kind of. It just looks like it's just all over yeah, the place. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, yeah, strange, strange one. But um, I think because I felt like you could tell how Villa were going to play. It just, it was odd. I'd, um, we're never going to know, and I'm sure there are reasons for it. But um, yeah, for some reason we we went tactically this way and it just didn't work mm. and as you can see from the heat maps they were slightly more advanced down that left hand side getting mm. not a dissimilar amount of touches but well yeah over over 80 more by the looks of it with 627 to our 5-4-1 mm. who was your 
man of the match if you had to name one for Bournemouth? Because we can look at who scored or use this mad algorithm to, to name theirs. Go on. Well, I'm sure that on that one, Neto would get it. Because, I mean, just because of the saves he made, I guess. But then he did concede three, so I'm not sure. I mean, I thought Rothwell obviously was doing OK before he come off. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think statistically, maybe Sinesi made some clearances. He might do all right for the rating. I'm not sure. It was Neto and Lerma that scored the best okay. at 6.8. 6. Uh, but yeah, I think I think Rothwell was in probably I think my man of the match. I think obviously when it's stat-based, I think that's probably because... Lerma done everything okay. Mm. Like he kept the ball, he made a few inceptions. But from our perspective, we were losing the game from early. And he, he, I didn't think he had the energy and the drive to, you know, because he's a bit more of a defensive player. But yeah, I suppose that makes sense. But um, yeah, who was who was theirs by the way? I'm just in, interested. Who got their man? Douglas Louise. Yeah, I thought he was excellent. Yeah. I thought Louise, uh, Ramsey, just getting a bit of a license in front of him as well. I thought they were, um, yeah, really, really good. And that Louise, every time I've seen him play, actually, I think he goes under the radar a little bit. I think he's a really, really good footballer. Mm. Yeah, so we need to talk about the run-in, but before we do that, we'll have a look at some of your tweets, because on Twitter, we were asking a few questions, like, are your optimism levels fluctuating game to game? I mean, I'll ask you these, and they are for me. Uh, I think I said it to round up the vlog, like, it does seem to be one step forward, two steps back at times. Other times, it, it feels like we're making strides forward. Mm. Um, but I've got to say, in terms of my own thoughts on Gary O'Neill, it just seems to be he just hasn't got any credit in the bank, has he? No, I think you've said that on one of the vlogs, and I, I do I do get that. I think I try not to openly say it all the time, especially on on these these sort of things, and you don't want to be too downbeat. It's very hard. I find it very difficult. Um, I think what's what's hard is I I think everyone's aware of kind of what I think we maybe should have done, in my opinion. What's difficult then is you go and beat Liverpool, you know, and, and perform really well, and I think. You know, before the game, I was kind of thinking, oh, we could cause some problems on the counter. And it, it went that way and brilliant. And all the changes were good, blah, blah, blah. And then you lose and you're critical. And people go, well, you weren't critical against Liverpool. But imagine if I was critical against Liverpool. Everyone yeah, would be yeah. going, well, what do you want? Yeah, you know, yeah. you've got to enjoy these moments. And at the end of the day, you've got to take it in isolation. Mm. And against Liverpool, we got the game plan, bang on the money. Yeah. And my, my wor- and the rest of it will be, you know, proof in the pudding, as I keep saying. But... Against Villa, my concern was what ended up happening. Yeah. And that is my thing going forward. And I've said it a few times. I don't like these fixtures. I'm interested to see what everyone else says because people are saying, oh, we've got good games on paper. For me, I always felt Liverpool would be would suit us more than Villa. Mm. And it obviously ultimately played out that way. And I, I worry about playing these sort of teams that are gonna we're going to have to unlock a little bit more yeah. and be a bit cleverer. But... Yeah, so Will Partridge uh, is looking at maybe the three teams that could be deemed worse than us. He says, fixture-wise, West Ham, Everton and Southampton and Forest are all worse, although they have all previously proven that they can pinch some points off the big teams. However, with the worst goal difference of all the teams and being so off it performance-wise in the last game, I would argue that we have got the most work to do. Aging Terry said, anything could happen in the next 11 games, so it's anyone's guess. All the teams around us are improving, so I hope that we can keep up. A lot of fans are having this kind of optimism that is fluctuating. All we want to see is just like two performances in a row, don't we? Yeah. And ideally six points. And maybe Brighton and Fulham... Yeah, could, could be those games. I think as a double header at home, you'd like to think so. But yeah, we all want to see that, and I, we got to appreciate that it's, it's very, very difficult to get back to back Premier League wins. You know, when you when you're Bournemouth, it's it's mm. always going to be tough, and all the teams around us are going to find that difficult. I think it's just um, the level of performance, and I think that that just that positivity that then breathes into the fan base because you see what's going on, and you know, I felt that. You know, even even in games, even if we're not winning them, you just want to see. Okay, I can see what we're trying to do here. Mm. Um, I don't mind going to the championship, mate, but I want us to give a bloody good go of it, and let's have it. Because this is my. So I don't want to go off a tangent because we're doing the tweets, but this is my over overriding thing is we can see goals. We are we can see the most goals in the league. Mm. Fact. So why? be really pragmatic and defensive to try and keep you up because it ain't going to work because yeah. we ain't good enough at the back so why not have a bloody go yeah, yeah. and then just, just have a go if we go down we go down because at the moment if we want to be just defend all game we will go down yeah. so just have a crack and if we're in the championship I'll enjoy it anyway let's just have a bit of a go and it's just going to these that, that villa game, it's just so dull Yeah. and and then people talk about the atmosphere and things like that and I agree I, I said to you didn't I um, that in terms of away atmospheres, oh, it's it, the worst I've ever seen it. That was, yeah. That because was away bad. ends, whatever happened, you're all just buzzing, aren't you? Yeah. There's barely a charm because, and we got to take a bit of responsibility for that, but equally, because negative performances and kind of tactical setups and that is going to breed into the fans. Yeah. 
and positivity. You see it in every game. Oh, God, if, you're, yeah. if you're on the front foot and you get a few corners, everyone's up. Yeah. And But we haven't got anything to get up about so often this season. And mm. I just want to see us, I've said it a few times in, in this show, throw caution to the wind a little bit yeah, okay. and believe this squad is not that bad. Believe in the squad. Believe in your attacking players because we've got a lot of them. Um, you know, get don't just rely on Billing popping up and you know saying, "Oh, Dom's got to do better." Let's get some more bodies up there. We've got yeah. some att- good attacking players. Um, yeah, I felt as though after the Arsenal, obviously it was so upsetting, and her, it, it, I felt hurt after the Arsenal game because it was the mm. worst way to lose a football match. But I really did feel after that that the players visibly left everything out there on the Absolutely. pitch. I, I, and then against Liverpool as well, and that was that two games in a row. Despite like it doesn't have to be three points no. in, in order to feel good. I actually felt okay after. To that Arsenal yeah. game obviously immediately afterwards not but we had a tactic it worked and yeah, Arsenal no. were quality they're top of the league they're, you know, they're blowing away teams like Crystal Palace 4-1 yeah. albeit Palace aren't great at the moment but they're blowing teams away they didn't blow us away no, on that... their own turf and then and then we followed it up yeah. that's all we want to see regardless of the result and mm. 3-0 Maybe it flattered Villa, maybe it didn't. Who knows? That's up for debate. However, I just don't feel as though the players left it out there at all. Yeah, I agree. And uh, obviously, I was alluded to there about us just having a go. But against Arsenal, you've got to appreciate where they are and that we nicked uh, the earliest goal you can nick and then nicked the goal from a set piece. And then I, I don't want us to go and gun ho. So I get so the performance, they had all the ball, but I'm thinking, no, they're going to have all the ball now. We're 2 yeah. 0 up at the Emirates. Just graft and yeah they won the game but like you said mate you've got to come out of it and I mean everyone obviously is lawing the players afterwards and you're going fair play lads mm. and it felt like from minute one in this Villa game that we weren't up to them levels for whatever reason but yeah that's that's all we want to see and, uh, and yeah just just intensity levels and just a bit of yeah a bit, a bit of fight, a bit yeah. of zip. Yeah. AFCB dad Simon K says he remains optimistic for the future of our club, whether that's immediate or long term. He says it's all about our own application and mentality. By now, O'Neill and the team know what works, but they are effective. But are they effectively deploying that? That was always the concern and remains so. Yeah, this kind of learning on the job. We, we've said the phrase learning on the job so many times, but it feels like they're not really learning on no. the job. Really, it's it's almost like an experiment that's being played out in the top flight, the best league in the world, and and that's that's not that. actually a that's not a, a gripe at Gary O'Neill because no, he's never no, been no. a manager. No, of so course, of course, course he's he's learning things, but uh, exactly as you say, mate, he shouldn't be learning it in the Premier League, in my opinion. Um, it's m- absolute madness. It's very very rare that this happens. But of course, I don't expect Gary O'Neill to be the finished article as a manager. No, Why should of he be? Not. I've got, and the, yeah, the, this is absolutely nothing against Gary. And I said, no. on, I think someone tweeted earlier on um, Red and Black app or something, and I, I replied to it. Like it said, out of ten, how confident do you feel that we could survive relegation? And I said, well, after the Liverpool game, I felt seven. Hmm. After the game against Villa, I think I said two. But based on the fact that those numbers are so largely different, overall three. Yeah, and that's and it's just the inconsistency. That that's all I want to see. I said it before, and I will say it again. It's just to, to see the and it's and it's performances against Brighton, who are who are brilliant. Fulham, who are very good. And I think you know, yes, they haven't got Mitrovic, etc. But I, I still, yeah, they're still a good side. And taking a look at these matches for all of the clubs, mate. I mean, you can see the other fourteen matches. So these are games against the other 14. Obviously, the other 13, the home ones, are highlighted in red there. So, for instance, like Southampton have only got three matches against the other 13 sides, apart from the top six at home. Um, West Ham have, have got three as well. We've, we've got four. There are some teams that seem to be in a fairly good position, like Leicester City, who they've got 11 games left, but they've got five of them as well. So maybe, maybe they'll feel quite confident. But when you're looking at these, mate, are there... Are you, are you feeling okay when you look at these resu- these matches on paper that we got ahead, or compared yeah. to the others, or what? They're not the they're not the worst on paper, but as I say, it's on paper. And um, when you, because you kind of mentioned there how you felt after Liverpool and then after Villa, and I think I was slightly different in the sense that after Liverpool, it was great in isolation. But I thought, no, now this is where it Matt, like, can we back it up against a team we're hoping to, you know, actually get some count of, and we couldn't. Um, I don't know. I don't want to look at the others. It's it's difficult, isn't it? Because you don't look at the others when you just know all we've got to do is do our own thing right and we can survive. But the thing is, we are we are starting to look at other teams' run-ins because mm. we're so concerned about how inconsistent we are. We know that we're inconsistent. Yeah, I'm trying to look off top, top of my head here as well. So Brighton, um, we lost in the reverse. 
Yeah. Fulham we drew in the reverse. Leicester we beat. Tottenham we lost. West Ham we lost. Southampton we lost. Leeds we lost. Chelsea we lost. Palace we lost. Man U we lost. And Everton we beat. Mm. So if I say it like that, then it doesn't sound good. So we have got to be better than we were against them the other yeah, time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Simple as that. If you, if you just say it in that in that way, it's um, a bit weird then to say we've got good fixtures. But we're a different side now, as everyone keeps telling me. We've got we've had the window now. So let's let's see what happens. Um, oh, I like the fact that the kind of six pointers, yeah. Uh, West Ham and Leeds, for example, are at home. I think that's that's important. Um, and then Southampton, obviously. I mean, them three is is massive. It's how many points we can get going into them three. Mm. How um, many points do you reckon we need? Need? Oh God! Four, like four wins. How many points are we on now? We're on twenty-four. I think. God, yeah, four wins probably. I just, I don't want to be. I can't. I just can't see four wins, mate. Fulham, West Ham, Leeds, and then just scraping points elsewhere, maybe. A cheeky win on the road, a cheeky few points, Leicester away. Come on, mate, we can do this. Yeah, of course we can. Of I mean, course we can. I mean, Crystal Palace are in dire straits. Man United might be on the beach by then. Yeah, yeah, of course we can. Everton might be safe by then. You know, we, the last game, and we get we get results at all of them. Um, you know, we all know that Chelsea are not having a very good season, and we got them at home. That should be winnable. Mm. But I remember it being winnable when we went to Chelsea and we mm. bent over. Mm. Just, no, we did though. We just bent over and went, oh, they're Chelsea, they're going to beat us. And they beat us easy and they barely won a game since. Yeah. Um, same with Palace. So all we can go off at the moment is being hopeful that things change. But then if you go off the evidence of what we've seen so far, mm. I'm concerned that we'll have enough to break these teams down and keep the door closed at the other end. But, you know, we're, we're in it for a reason and that's because the other teams are also not very consistent. No, that's and that's... Right. You know, Southampton got a, obviously a decent point, but then they're, they're not looking great. They're they're one of the I would have thought they'll go down to be honest. Um, Leeds are all over the place. Even even Wolves are not even sure about. Leicester still can't pick up. Forest look like they're on the decline as well as Crystal mm. Palace. So, I mean, I, I think Everton would be. I thought Everton would be fine as soon as Deutsch come through the door, and I still probably agree with that. Mm. But they're still in it. So, you know, you've only got to finish above three teams. So who knows? You you like you say, mate. You you go against Brighton. It's a you nick a goal, spirits are up. At, yeah. you know, sorry, against Fulham first, and um, and you get a win. Then suddenly you go into the Brighton game. Go, we just beat Fulham, positive spirits, and we get six points. And suddenly you go, we're going to stay up. So that's football. That so I'm, football. I'm just hoping that I go. Bloody hell, was I wrong? We just won three, two games three. And nil. you know what? As supporters, we're we're more than happy to be wrong. Oh, I know there are some people that staunchly stand by their yeah. opinions, like on like people, like even on like Dom Solanke, people are still saying the same things. Like oh, three years ago, four years ago, I said this and all that. And there are people about Gary O'Neill that constantly. Harp on about like it's almost more important to be right than yeah, just, just I hate winning. That. Like it doesn't matter. You don't have to keep saying like referencing what you said. I hate uh, that. I, I, oh, I want that. I want. Matter. I want Gary Neal to turn into prime Pep Guardiola like, yeah. and be the best manager I've ever seen. And I get memed up for saying like, I, I don't think care. Good about, but, yeah, oh. It doesn't matter about being right or being wrong. It's just but, um, we've always got our opinions, and some of them are knee jerk. We know that. Oh, of course, everyone's. You're going to be, yeah. Especially after, uh, you know after games and after poor performances. I just, yeah. I just, I just think at the moment it's. I don't know. I just, I just want. I mean, we were. Let's let's be honest. We were. There were some negative moments last season when we got automatic promotion because some of the time what we were seeing, we were like, how can you get? Yeah. And I'm just trying to be honest about what I'm seeing. And when I'm in that, I'm finding it really hard because I'm just finding it very, very dull. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's that's. That's just as simple as that, mate. Simple as that. And finally, just to finish, Ashley Michael James said, I feel the issue is sides are much too inconsistent to really go on a run, us included. However, we did well to get six points out of our last five games, considering the opposition. Home games are massive and must win. And we need to at least draw the away games slash against top sides. He also says, personally, I think Forrest are in trouble due to their away form. Palace and Wolves could get dragged into it too. Everton will be fine. Southampton Leeds could maybe survive. I rate our chances about 40%. Right, mate. We are staying up. We are staying up. We're we're going to be finishing 17th. Which three teams do you think it would be if we were to? Southampton. Yep. Nottingham Forest. Yep. And I'm actually going to go a little bit... I think West Ham. Ooh, OK, tasty. Uh, Europe's not going to help them. No, OK. Um, and I think they might take their off the ball a little bit. Um, fixtures look quite difficult there. Yeah. Have a little look. But any of them could go, mate. As I say, if any of the ones that are fighting, the ones I think will be OK is Everton and Wolves. Mm. Um, anyone else in that mix, I think, could get dragged in. Um, yeah. 
Um, I always say, Tom, it was a pleasure. Last week I meant it. This week I don't, but it was a pleasure, Tom. I agree, mate. Yeah, it wasn't a pleasure. Hated every minute of it. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's always, yeah, good to get out of your system. Good mate. to get out of your system. Whether you've watched this on YouTube or you've listened on the audio pod, thank you very much. Uh, on YouTube during the week, if you're a Villa fan, you're still somehow watching this after an hour, we have got an away day show which rates your away ground, the experience, the fans, the people. Were they horrible? Were they nice? We talk you through it. And also we'll drop some content during the international break. I'm certain. Yep, yeah, Tom, thanks very much. And uh, fingers crossed, more positive vibes yeah. like Liverpool will be coming after the next Saturday game. Mate. As you say, mate, little international break. As Scott Parker would say, little reset. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Then we come back fighting. Let's, let's say hopefully... All our players, we've got more than usual away on international yeah. duties. Hopefully they're all right and we get get some bodies back. And Yeah, and then a nice little home double header. I do love that. Yeah, that's get it. a win against Fulham, then under the lights. Love it. All will be fine. Are the cherries? Yeah, we'll see you soon. Bye.